ora, my darlings. I hope you're doing really well. I wanted to share something with you that I have found really valuable lately. Um, and it's really inspiration from a book that I would like to just share some snippets from. The name of the book, the title of the book, and I hope I've recalled, <laughs> retained this in my memory correctly. It's um, Excellence Wins, A No-Nonsense Guide. Um, oh, A No-Nonsense Guide to... Oh, I've forgotten it. It's something like a no-nonsense guide to achieving excellence in a world of compromise. It's something along those lines. But the main title is Excellence Wins. And it's by um, a chap called, um, now let me get the pronunciation right, Horst Schulze. Horst Schulze. If you put in Excellence Wins into Amazon, it should come up. Okay, my loves. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a bit uh, unusual names for my mind. I'm not used to German names. I believe it's his, his uh, heritage is German. Anyway, I've got the audiobook of this, um, this kind of really amazing um, exploration, really, of what it means to be excellent in business. So this guy, um, Horst Schulze, he is most famous for long career, really eminent at this stage in his um, long career in hospitality. I would say that's fair to say that's his main thing. And um, so the Ritz-Carlton Group, I believe he's still currently the CEO of the Ritz-Carlton Group overall. I may have got that wrong. In any case, the book is just a, a really like a case study in just the most phenomenal uh, examples of um, customer care that's just off the scale. Um, what's really lovely is that I can certainly say in my life, I've experienced some of that excellence, both through my own offering when I've worked in customer service and I've str striven and I've really done my utmost best to give my customers that excellent experience that they remember, that they talk about, that they tell their friends about rather than just being like, meh, it was all right, you know, which, I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel like that's more my experience. Um, that's more my experience, full stop at the moment. Um, and I've also experienced this, um, you know, I, I've, I've raved on about, I don't know why, I should be like an ambassador for John Lewis, because I rave about John Lewis and, um, and partners, and they are a British brand, um, and they get it right in my view, pretty much, they get it right. And, and so the book could be speaking about that kind of level of customer care and service that is just excellent throughout. Um, but in my view, I think more and more it's becoming rare. And so it means that if you want to stand out in the world, the way, one way to do that is to be excellent at whatever you're doing, whatever your business is, whoever your customers are, your client group, you know, be excellent. And people will notice that because we do live in a world that's kind of full of mediocrity in terms of customer care and the way you're treated. I mean, you know, I mean, I was on the phone to my mobile phone company two weeks ago for two hours. I mean, that's not excellent customer service, right? Anyone by any standards, anyone would know that. Um, but it's just accepted as the norm here in Aotearoa because we don't have that much competition. So for me, that's been one of the cultural uh, transitions that has been has been difficult and is difficult for me. Going from extreme, like L being born and raised in London and living in places in Great Britain that you know are it, often I've lived when I moved out of London. I kind of lived in more touristy areas, so therefore the service standards were pretty high because it's you know as you may know in the UK there's a lot of people, there's a lot of tourists, and you have to stand out. And the way you stand out, if you don't want to be undercut by your competition, if you don't want to be kind of eclipsed and just knocked out of the out of the game, you have to be good. So you know the standards I experienced in the UK were here and in Aotearoa you know, it's just a very different playing field, let's put it that way. So this book really strikes me powerfully, even on that level, on a personal level, and, you know, noticing cultural differences from one country to another, they're inevitable because the demographics are massively different. There's no people here, you know, there's more sheep than people in Aotearoa. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked on that. I want to give you the, the deets, to give you the juice that I want to extract from this. But there's so many gems in this book. I highly recommend it highly highly recommend it because you can apply everything he's talking about even to your own personal brand even if you're not an organization even if you're not a ceo 
everything he's talking about you can distill down to you know the individual if you need to and that's kind of what I've made my notes this is kind of what I want to speak to today so I want to speak to specifically leadership and um, when I say leadership don't misunderstand me I'm, I know that we don't all want to be CEOs we don't all want to run our own businesses but you know I think even just the idea of um, being excellent enough to kind of feel like you take ownership of your role within your company um, or whether you work in a supermarket and you know you're a checkout assistant you we can we all have um, a degree of autonomy and um, we all have our own spheres right it doesn't matter what job we do we're not necessarily going to be given a title of leader but you can within that role um, I think embody some of these amazing qualities which I'm gonna share with you now that he digs into so I think the first thing, okay, is really he speaks to is understanding the vision. Understanding the vision that might be, if it's your own brand, if it's your own company, then obviously that's to do with who are you? What do you stand for? Um, what do you want the world to know you for? You know, so this is your vision. And um, particularly what is expected of you? I think that's such a useful question. Like I even was thinking, what about in a relationship, in my marriage? What's expected of me? What do I expect of myself? What am I bringing to this role, you know? So you can apply this stuff across the board in my view. This is why I really appreciate um, this, this particularly this part of the book where he's talking about leadership. So that's the first thing, okay, my friends? So this, the first thing is understanding your vision, clarifying it, understanding what's expected of you. Then the second is making a conscious decision to achieve that vision um and then the way and so the big mistake I, and i've seen this in business before not so much when i've in my own businesses i hope but you know you have to communicate that vision i think sometimes um ceos and people in authority within an organization have a sense of well i know where i'm going with this with this company but they don't necessarily <laughs> share that with the team and you you know if you've ever been in a company as i certainly have or an organization where you feel like it's like everyone's pulling in different directions. Like there's no sort of sense of ownership and guidance um, from the top and then that filters down. Whereas, you know, uh, rather you can find that everyone's sort of doing their own thing or no one really takes ownership or there isn't really a clear sense of why are we doing this? I just come to work and I get my paycheck. So I think th this second point is super important and I'll read this again for you. So it's making a conscious decision to achieve that vision and specifically do not keep it to yourself, okay? That has to, it can't be a secret inside of you. It has to be clearly communicated. This is what he's arguing for and I think that's so right. Um, everyone on your team needs to know what the vision is and be going in the same direction. Then the third point really is execution. So, you know, you have to um, understand the plan and be working towards that and then review you know if you have a plan then you can make sure you can you can start to measure out well how are we doing but without kind of including everyone in the conversation there's no chance that you can achieve that right so i think the the final point is um yeah figuring out the actionable steps that align with the vision um, and basically not allowing yourself to get sidetracked from that and if you do notice things getting sidetracked, then you can quickly address issues and problems. You can notice where you've got, if you're, a, if you're a CEO or a manager or a boss of a company, you can notice when people are not wanting or able to kind of go in the right direction and then reassess and review and move on from there. So my friends, let me just quickly recap. So I want to, I want to make this linked in friendly and um, nice and short. The first point is understanding the vision. This, the, the really you need to understand what's expected of you, make a conscious decision to achieve that vision and don't keep it a secret, share it with the whole team, execute and make a plan and, and get everyone on board with that and notice, um, you know, the milestones and um, progress and places where there's not progress, where things need to be reviewed and be real about that, be honest. I hope that's useful for you, my friends. I've done it in a really kind of succinct way. I do urge you to and, and encourage you to buy the book. I don't get anything out of that. I wish I did because I'm telling everyone to buy it because I love this book. Um, and really, I hope all the business owners in New Zealand read the book. <laughs> I will see you in the next vlog, my friends. Kia ora, thank you so much for joining me.